This young man's name is Do Ilchul. He is the son of a gambling legend known as the One Ear. Even though the One Ear had died, his talent in gambling was passed down to his son Ilchul. Ilchul himself was still a student, but his ability to analyze opponents at the casino table was worthy of praise. Apart from being able to read his enemy's cards, he also could observe their movements which were said to create a certain rhythm, so that from there he could predict which cards were coming to weaken his opponents with this ability and win the game. This ability and skill got him the nickname Tadza, a professional gambler, in Korean. He often gambled at the same gambling house owned by a bearded guy, whom he often gave a share of his winning, but one day, after winning a big money, he met a woman he had never seen before. Feeling sorry for her, he finally accepted the woman's invitation to dinner. Without getting to know Ilkul, the woman knew that he was Taza. Ilkul's abilities were already known throughout Korea, but instead of being amazed by him, she asked him to stop gambling because despite the big wins, gambling would eventually end up in a complete loss, leaving an individual with nothing at all. Ilkul became curious about who the woman in front of him was. Unfortunately, the woman immediately left because a guy coming from a car forcibly picked her up. As soon as Ilkul arrived home, he was surprised by his mother who greeted him inside his apartment room. His mother was the owner of a small food stall on the outskirts of Seoul. That night, the mother made dinner for her child because she knew that soon he would take the civil servant test. She deliberately visited Seoul to see her only son. However, his mother's attitude made him feel guilty instead. He was her mother's only hope for raising the status of their family, especially after his father died without any inheritance. It was natural that the mother wanted her child to get a better job, so to fulfill his mother's wishes, Ilkul still went to college as usual, but unfortunately, he couldn't concentrate because his thoughts were only about gambling. It wasn't just gambling that occupied Ilkul's mind, but also the mysterious woman who met him yesterday. She disappeared as mysteriously as she appeared. Without a trace at all, he even didn't know her name. Those thoughts made him couldn't concentrate while riding a bike when suddenly, a speeding car stopped in front of him at the T-junction and he hit it. The car owner came out to see the dented door of his car and immediately demanded Ilkul to pay compensation and without fear, Ilkul was willing to pay it. Ilkul's courage made the car owner feel challenged, who then intended to challenge Ilkul to a gambling game. Turned out that the owner of the car was the one who picked up the mysterious woman he had seen before. This gambling stake on Ilkul's broken bicycle and the car owner's dented car door. Whoever lost had to be willing to replace it with a new one, and the mysterious woman who turned out to be named Madonna was the bookie. Ilkul thought that this gambling would take place quickly, and he would come out as the winner, but it turned out that the man in front of him was not just any common gambler. Ilkul, who had always been thought of as Tatsa, suddenly became helpless because of the man. Ilkul got a bad card and lost a lot in his first game. Ilkul didn't want to give up, so he borrowed some money from the gambling house owner to continue the game. Even though the man had asked him to stop, Ilkul didn't want to listen to that advice because the stakes were increased, namely being able to go on a date with Madonna. Madonna actually asked Ilkul to stop too because his enemy wasn't just a usual gambler, but just like the gambling house owner's suggestion earlier, he didn't want to take it for granted because he just wanted to win. Unfortunately, Ilkul had bad luck that day and once again, he lost a lot at stake. Finally, Ilkul had to face the thugs who immediately beat him until someone managed to find out about the beating and immediately saved Ilkul. The person's name is Eku, commonly known as One Eye. He admitted that he once owed Ilkul's father a favor so he would pay off all Ilkul's debts which numbered around $100,000. Ilkul was confused because all this time he had never known his father's acquaintance, but he didn't think about it any further because he was too busy bearing the pain all over his body. The next day, Ilkul asked Eku again about his relationship with the one ear his father, but Eku didn't explain it in detail, he instead talked about the greatness of the on ear compared to the other Taza. At first, Ilkul thought that Eku was one of the legendary Tatsas, but Eku admitted that he was just a fraud. He then explained to Ilkul to be more sensitive because in the world of gambling, there was always a way to drain other people's money. One example was Ilkul himself who had unknowingly been made poor by the owner of the gambling house he used to visit. Therefore, Eku asked him to stop gambling, at least for now. This was because Ilkul hadn't experienced any further losses, but again, Ilkul didn't want to listen. He felt he had enough skill and wanted to prove it in front of Eku, so after that, the two of them went straight to the casino. Ilkul proved to Eku that he had what it takes to dominate the world of gambling. It turned out that Eku had been waiting for Ilkul's natural skill to show up because he was secretly forming a team for his project. Apart from Ilkul, he has also targeted several people. The first is Kachi, a dealer known for his amazing shuffling card skills. 
The second is Yang Ming, a casino waiter who often steals customers' betting money secretly and never reports, since nobody ever found out about it, while Yang Mei can get a lot of money from it. The third is Mr. Quan, a tavern owner known for his acting skills and often cooperating with bookies. The four people, including Il Pool, were gathered by Eku in an empty warehouse. At first, Kachi felt that this team was useless, especially since they didn't know each other until finally, Eku came and explained his plan. It turned out that Eku intended to drain the property of a nouveau riche named Mool. He was a cunning landlord who recently started gambling, but to drain all his wealth, it must be done carefully and this was why the team was formed. Kachi and Young Mei would pretend to be a married couple who wanted to buy a property through Mool, but to provoke Mool's self-esteem, Young Mei and Kachi had to make Mool feel annoyed because so it would be easier for them to drag him to the gambling table. With the same old trick, Young Mei and Kachi were initially going to lose the game and made it seem like Mool was the winner, but when Mool felt like he was at his best, Kachi and Young Mei would exchange their cards which made Mool get a bad card, starting Mool's downfall. He, who had been arrogant, finally swallowed a lot of loss. With the strategy continued, the next day, Young Mai and Kachi went to Mool's office to cancel their plan to buy the property while deliberately saying that Mool was a loser, provoking him so Mool finally wanted to find a great gambler. This was where Il Pool and Mr. Kwan took on the role. Mr. Kwan would pretend to be a businessman who had a nephew who was good at gambling, and without thinking twice, Mool would then recruit Il Tool to be his partner at the gambling table. Without waiting any longer, the next night, Mool returned to challenge Young Mai and Kachi. Once again, Young Mai and Kachi used their old tricks, as they both deliberately gave in at the start and made it seem like Mool was the winner. And when he was confident that this time he couldn't possibly lose, while celebrating his winnings, Kachi would open his card that turned out to be worth more than Mool's. Finally, Mool could only bite his fingers as he lost a lot. Later, when Mr. Kwan was about to say goodbye to Mool, Mool stopped him and asked him to stay because he still wanted to play, but when Mr. Kwan was about to say something, a car showed up and Mool immediately left to greet the person coming from the car, who turned out to be Madonna, the woman Il Tool knew and the person that Mool claimed was his boss. Il Tool didn't expect that Madonna was also working with Mool. Il Tool couldn't take his eyes off Madonna. After thinking that Madonna had disappeared, she showed up that day and he was able to meet her again. It turned out that Mool had once owed Madonna for investment reasons. Mool admitted that he would use the money to build a building even though Mool actually used the money for gambling, while the building promised by Mool was never built because the money had run out without any left. Therefore, Il Tool tried to remind Madonna that Mool was just a fraud. He asked the woman to withdraw all her money from Mool because Il Tool and his friends were draining his wealth, but this information made Madonna feel confused. She didn't understand why Il Tool bothered to tell her because if Mool was indeed a fraud, only Madonna would be harmed. And for Madonna's question, Il Tool finally realized that he actually liked the woman, which for her, the love didn't mean anything at all. Turned out, Madonna's arrival was aimed to provoke Il Tool to reveal the secret of Eku's team. Finally, after finding out that he had been tricked, Mool mobilized all his men to catch Kaichi and Young Mei. Mr. Kwan had tried to save them both, but because Mool's men were already in power, Kachi was willing to sacrifice himself to buy time for Young Mai to escape from there. He told Young Mai to meet Mr. Kwan. Meanwhile, Il Kool was on the verge of getting killed, but fortunately, Eku arrived just in time. He managed to save Il Tool and took him away from Mool. The next day, Il Tool woke up at Eku's headquarters. Unfortunately, they were missing one member, namely Kachi, who had been caught. This ultimately made the team members consider Il Kool's act as a betrayal that even claimed one of their members. Il Tool didn't defend himself. He instead asked the reason why Eku wanted to save him. It turned out that Eku had once betrayed one ear so that his life was ended by a legendary gambler called the Devil. After hearing this story, Il Pool was immediately angry and without saying goodbye, he immediately left there. Meanwhile, in another place Madonna and Mool planned to take revenge on Il Pool and his friends, but because they realized that there was still Eku behind the group, Madonna planned to ask the Devil for help to finish them all off. On the other hand, since that incident, Il Tool returned to the gambling houses and beat the gamblers there. Il Kool's game was really feared. He could make people lose in an instant until they didn't want to gamble with him anymore, but one afternoon there was someone who wanted to meet him and that person was Kachi. Il Kool was surprised because he had thought that Kachi already had died, but Kachi's arrival brought even more shocking news, namely that Eku had been killed by the devil. Il Tool felt even angrier and intended to avenge Eku and his father, whom the devil had murdered long ago. Without wasting more time, Il Tool immediately met Mr. Kwan. He asked for advice on how to take his revenge on the devil, but Mr. Kwan didn't give any advice. He only emphasized that that was the way of life for gamblers if they didn't stop immediately. 
If Il Chul completed his revenge, Mr. Quan asked the young man to stop gambling after that. The next day, Il Chul immediately met the devil who had allied with Madonna and Mool. Il Chul brought a bag full of money. As for this one, not only betting the money he had, he had his life at stake. Anyone who was lost or proven to have cheated should be executed. That night, when Il Chul intended to rest, suddenly Madonna visited him in his room. He invited Il Chul to work together to trick the devil and win all his money. But this time, Il Chul didn't believe in Madonna anymore, he already had enough of her cheating on him, and he didn't want to fall into the same trap again. But Madonna said that Il Chul didn't need to trust her. He should only believe in the amount of money they could bring home. Finally, Il Chul let Madonna make a strategy with him, because it turned out that he had also collaborated with Mool. Madonna was surprised at first, but this was natural, in the world of gambling. If they were up against a strong player, the other players would work together to defeat him. Il Chul was just using old tricks, but he needed Mool and Madonna to carry out his plan. At first, as usual, they would play with four players. They knew that the devil would only try to make Il Chul lose, so he would only focus on Il Chul's game. And when he was not looking, Madonna and Mool would change the deck so that Il Kool would get the better card, and when the devil thought that he had won, Il Kool's card would have a higher value than the devil. The devil felt he had been cheated, but the devil couldn't prove this, and he had to accept his defeat. Not to mention Madonna, who apparently had a bad past with him, wanted him to die. After the gambling ends, according to the agreement, Il Kool would only take $2 million while Mool would take $4 million. But because Mool was a greedy person, he also intended to take $2 million belong to Il Kool, but Il Kool was no less a genius. Before that, he had collaborated with Mool's underling who held a grudge against his boss because he was always treated badly. In the end, Mool was killed by his own man. The next day, Kachi and Young Mai, who turned out to be married, suddenly got a million dollars in their car. Likewise with Mr. Kwan, who suddenly received the same amount of money sent by an unknown person. But when they saw a card in the bag, they immediately knew that it was Il Kool. Meanwhile, Il Kool was starting a new life by living with his mother, and as the only son, he managed to answer his mother's hopes by becoming a civil servant. Il Kool had stopped gambling and wanted to live a simple and happy life with his mother.